Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna head down to the garden center and do a little bit of plant shopping. We woke up to rain and it's sprinkling just a little bit. It's glorious, I'm loving it. And it's supposed to be a little bit warmer today, but it's just a good day to not work in the squishy flower beds but to just get more plants instead. So Aaron is coming down with me. He has a separate project. We're kind of looking at the same things, but different missions a little bit. You're looking for a North Pole Arborvita, right? Yeah, uh, maybe two, at least one. I need to go look at the arbs just really quick before we leave. We have one spot on the new property in the South Garden where we put in all those North Poles. One, right, one spot that the arb keeps dying. This will be the fourth arb that we're putting in a spot, but we haven't tried putting one in early in the spring like this mm -hmm. where I don't know if they're getting too much water or not enough water, but I figure if we just put it in early mm -hmm. and just let the spring rain kind of do its thing and then give it the same irrigation as the rest of them, hopefully that'll work. We've like, been doing it hope. in the heat of the summer. Yeah. We've been replacing them mm -hmm. when it's hot and that's kind of hard anyway. Yeah. So North Pole Arborvitas are definitely on the list. Uh, they got some great big B&B &B ones, so I think that they will fill in the hedge nicely. You won't really notice that one's like way smaller than the rest. And then I am also gonna be looking at evergreens, different kinds though. I would like to find some more smaller evergreens to tuck into like closer to the edge of flower beds. And then we'll just see what else we find. It just seemed like a good thing to do on a day like today. This is the spot right here. We did a video replacing this last year, mm -hmm. I think. It's just kind of like a bum spot. It is a bum spot. I mean, really from, it seems like from here, you can see that other small one. That was a replacement too, wasn't it? Uh huh. And it took. It took, but there was a couple more this that we one, left, right? Those were, that was original. I think so, and yeah. And it stunted, like look at the one next to it. Those were planted at the same time. It's just like this whole spot is, there's something going on underneath it. I know there's a lot of hard pan right here. Like yeah, so I don't know if, you know, I'll just see how many your mom has and what size they are too. So like, I mean, I'm kind of hopeful we can get them this size. Shoulder height to you. Mouth height. Wait, are you kind of, yeah, I suppose. Chin height. Chin height. <laughs> I think they are that big. They might not be that wide, but they were up on pellets when I saw them. So We'll see. And you guys know we have a lot of space to fill up, not only out here, but around the Hartley, around our front areas, uh, in front of the house. But I'm wanting more stuff. This is um, uh, Montana moss, juniper. And it gets like five feet wide, two feet tall. And it's got a beautiful structure. And I want more stuff like that, that I can tuck in closer to the edges of flower beds. All right, here we are. My goodness, it's looking like they could almost put in another spring order. Oh, it's starting to look like an in-season garden center. Look at all of these beautiful evergreens. <gasps> Do you wanna go find the North Poles first? Yeah. See what they look like? And then I thought that we would just kind of pick through and see what we can see. I don't really like these. Do you? With the cinnamon color? Not to be color? a negative, Nancy. It doesn't look cinnamon to me. It just kind of looks like burned, I guess. This is a arb called Grun Kugel. Is that right? You know, I can see what you're saying. I can Doesn't see it kind of look like a winter burned, you know, look a little bit or? Well, yeah, <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, if you know it's what it's supposed to do, then it doesn't bother you maybe quite as much. Sure. But I am not sure where the arbs would be, except for I do see some by the berry beds back here. Oh, so many fun things. Also, we'll take a spin through there. They do have some of their roses done. Back here? Yeah. If, I don't know that those are North Poles though, Aaron. Those look like green giants. Yeah. For sure. Um, North Poles might be back here. Oh, yep. Kind of looks like it. Uh-huh. Those look great. Yep, those are North Poles. I would think that those would be about the same height, don't you? Yeah. I mean, once they're dropped down. Once it's off, you know, because this is the ground level. Right. So, yeah. It's pretty good size. Yeah. And now, how many did you want to get? Well, There's three on that pallet. I wonder, you know, some of those that are so stunted, mm -hmm. I wonder if it'd be worth them to pull it up, uh -huh. pull some of those little tiny ones up and replace them. So I feel like we, well, how much is it? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's not too bad. Okay, good. Well, it looks like there's four on that pallet right over there. I could be wrong. You'd have that whole pallet just put in the back of the truck. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Let's just get four of them. Okay. Weird that like some of them have a little bit more of a winter cast. Well, and than depending others. on the side, come look at this one. This is the winter cast side. Oh, that's true. Okay. So this palette here then. 
All right. That's gonna suck to dig in the mud. Well, the, the root balls are this big. So like these pots are a lot bigger than the root ball actually is. They'll just lift right out because they haven't rooted in yet. Yeah. Okay, so we got the North Pole situation handled. Now we get to look at more evergreens. And I think we'll just start back here because there are a few on pallets. The rain's starting to pick up a little bit, a little bit. One thing I absolutely love when these first come in, this is a hoop side blue spruce. They just, they look so gorgeous and so frosty. I think they're awesome. So this is a Picea pungens glauca. Uh, the hoop side grows 40 by 15, which is awesome because you know, a lot of big, a lot of the evergreens, a lot of the blue spruces will grow a lot wider than that. And 15 feet I think is manageable in the width department. I mean, imagine that 40 feet tall, just 15 feet wide, tucked into the landscape somewhere. So pretty. We've got the Austrian pines here. Oh, I like this one. I don't know what it is. It's a spruce. Oh, silver blue Serbian spruce. Oh my, 25 by 15. I love the Serbian spruce, how they've got the bicolor needles. So when you look at this, it looks blue and green at the same time, which gives it kind of a sparkly quality. Oh, now that is really pretty. We'll have to think about that one. That's a contender. Looks like there's some Vanderwolf pines back here. That's this one here. And then this is a blue scotch pine. That's a columnar one. So this one grows only like six to eight feet wide. 20 to 25 feet tall, so three through seven. Dang, look at that. That's really neat. I did show these in the background of one of our videos when I was down here helping. These are a Vanderwolf lollipop. Isn't that neat? I don't know that I've ever noticed a Vanderwolf being grown in this structure, kind of that topiary structure. And we do have one of these in our garden. This is an Oregon green Austrian pine. So 20 by 15 stays a little bit smaller than the traditional Austrian. Look at this back here. It is just squishy. With our small amount of rainfall, you know, I mean, we do get more of it in the spring, thankfully, uh, but our soil does not know what to do with any amount of moisture. It just puddles. It puddles and it takes a while in some spots to soak in. Okay, we're gonna cruise over here. Oh, no, we're not. I see a bunch of red sold tags. This is the sold section. There's a weeping white spruce right here. We've got two of these at home and I love them. These grow like 12 to 15 feet tall and just like three to four feet wide, right? <laughs> Probably look at the tag. Yeah, 15 feet tall, four feet wide. There's so many trees that I look at that I'm bound to screw up the measurements on some of them. But that weeping white spruce is one of my favorite evergreens that we added to the South Garden last spring. We got a big one from Jaker. It came B&B &B, and it's got the most gorgeous layered structure and it's just got such a strong presence in the garden. Uh, while you want some evergreens to be more wispy and architectural, uh, like just a little bit more graceful in their architecture. It's nice to have those that have that very strong presence as well. Blue star juniper lollipops. What are these? This is a dwarf globe. I love things like this. Three to five feet tall, five to six feet wide. That might be a good one to add in. We're gonna keep that in mind. Oh, but wait, what is this one? Ooh, Lundabee's dwarf blue spruce. I don't know anything about this one. Two feet tall, three feet wide. Yes. That's a tiny little one. I love that. Okay. I'm not sure why they parked it here, but I'm going to load it up. <laughs> Need a cover on this one. Woo! It's chilly and, and damp. That's good. Okay, we're back up front. Oh, I love to see things starting to take shape. We've got some lilacs. These are some white lilacs, all oh, big buds. Look at the blooms that we're gonna enjoy on those. Oh, and these are the Ludwig Spath. I have one of those we just planted last year. Here's some little guys, the Jacobson Mugo four feet tall by six feet wide. Whoa, it's hard to imagine that that gets even that big. So dainty right now. Kodomaru Japanese maple, six by six. Beautiful stem color. Ground hugger Eastern white pine, six feet tall by 10 feet wide. That's got a beautiful soft 
looking needle than they are soft. My preference always runs on the spruce side of things over pines um, just because I mean we've got pines in our garden and we'll probably add a few more in uh, but they needle cast a little bit worse uh, and which means you know you clean the needles out of them once a year usually when they're pushing new growth um, and they also are prone to get blight and that's one of the reasons why we took out the big Austrians by our gazebo uh, because once a tree is afflicted with blight like that, their needles start to brown like halfway down and you can control it. Like you can spray your trees to where they don't get worse, but you can't correct the problem. Like you can't fix the needles that have already turned brown. So they always just kind of look bad for the rest of the time. Spruces just handle things a little bit better around here. These are so cute. One foot by four foot. Oh, Valley cushion mugo pine. We should probably get a cart. I think I should at least put one of these somewhere. And that's the beauty of evergreens too. Oftentimes you don't have to do a bunch. You can just do an accent thing and be done. Oh, look at this cutie right here. This is a push Norway spruce. Push, I think P-U-S-C-H. Two by three. Yes, we need one of these too. Okay, let's get us a cart. Okay, which one? They're all cute. Well, in an effort not to mess up their swoop. Oh, I like this one. These are harvest moon cedars. They are very bright. Not as bright as these though. These are the forever goldie arbs right here. Oh, look at this one. Helga Austrian pine, eight by eight. That gets pretty good size. Today I'm focusing on things that stay smaller. Eight by eight, that's still, that is good size. The Dobbs frosted juniper, I love these. I think the structure is absolutely gorgeous. Probably should have one of these somewhere. Two by eight. Junipers do exceptionally well in our area. Avatar, you guys, we planted one of these. It's kind of by the uh, Hartley. 20 by 15 is how big these grow. And I think they've got the cutest structure. You can see what it looks like once it's a little bit bigger. They get a little bit more of that layered look. I see a AB's blaze. I know nothing about that. That one grows eight by six. Blue Angel Japanese white pine. See what I mean by the needle cast? They're gorgeous, but you know, they are a little bit of maintenance just in that you have to clean them so they don't have those brown needles in there. Montgomery Blues grow eight by six. I've always thought the Mr. Bowling Ball arms were really pretty. I'm not sure that Aaron would love the, the tip color, but I think they're really soft and gorgeous and they do grow in that very strict sphere shape. Oh my, yellow ribbon arborvita. Holy moly, are those ever yellow. Oh, I like this one a lot. It's a weeping spruce. Picea abies pendula. I feel like I should have that one somewhere. North Star White Spruce, 12 by six. That's a beauty. Christina Blue Spruce, six by six. The picture makes it look a lot more blue than it is right here, but I really like how thick those needles look. This is a pretty one. Look at the cones. A blue short needle Japanese white pine, 20 by 15. Can you imagine once that gets real big? He's so pretty. Oh my, look at these. This is the Burke's Red Variegated Pine. Look at that. That is super interesting. And then these, you guys, these are a Justin Brower's Boxwood. My parents started planting these last year, so I'm not sure how they do, you know, over the course of many, many years, but they did look really nice last year and they only grow two by two. Yeah. That's nice for a small hedge or a small accent evergreen somewhere. They've got a little bit of a smaller leaf. Let's see. They're a Buxa Seneca, which I don't know a lot about, but they're not the type of boxwood that will stink when they bloom, like English boxwoods do. Oh, the big tuna, Mugo Pine, 10 by 6. <laughs> kind of like that name. I've always been the hugest fan of these uh, Hinoki Cypress. This is a Confucius Hinoki Cypress. They have such an under the sea sort of look. They, in our area, we have to put them in a shaded location, otherwise they burn. Um, and I do think they like maybe a little bit soil and more of the acidic side of things, but oh, they're so pretty. Frankie Boy Arbs, oh, okay, we gotta go around. Oh, look at all of these, they are so cute. L.E.B. Hinoki Cypress. There's a little push uh, spruce. This is cool. Chiramen Hanoki Cypress. Look at the structure of that one. Wow. 
Mitch Mini Dwarf Swiss Mountain Pine. Less than one feet, 10 year size. Wow. And these just have such like a, a lemon cypress vibe, but a little bit more free form. Look at these Katoni asters though, you guys. Look at the color. So these are the Little Dipper Katoni Aster, ground cover type shrub, uh, half to one foot tall and three to four feet wide. And they are such beautiful plants. They do grow, you know, very flat to the ground. They have got strong branches, uh, little white flowers late spring, and then they're followed by little red berries that are so pretty. Procumbens Blue Spruce, we planted one of these last year. These grow two feet tall by 10 feet wide. I really like the color of those. They're very, very blue. And these are also really nice boxwoods, the Mount Brunos. They grow three by three, so a little bit bigger than the Justin Browers. Really fun option. Okay, I'm trying not to get too ahead of myself. There's not that much room left in the truck. So we've got three evergreens on the cart and I do have a few items back here um, that I tagged while I was working down here, helping with the loads. So I thought we would maybe grab those things and that'll keep us busy for a little while. We just gotta find everything. It's, it's along this fence line. There's my dwarf nectarine. I don't know how to get this out of here. And there's our flavor top nectarine tree. Okay, and then we've got a, a crab apple in here somewhere. Indian magic crab apple right in front of my face, but there's another one, a sparkling Sprite. Okay, I'm gonna work on unearthing these. Okay, I'm gonna have to come back for those two. You know, I used to stay in such good shape because I was constantly, well, lugging big things around all day long, but I was constantly pulling carts like through heavy gravel and that'll condition you up real fast. Okay, I think we can't fit very much more in there. <laughs> successful load. Very successful, yes. Here's what we ended up with, you guys. There are seven plants right there. I'm super excited about them. So starting on this end, we have a sparkling Sprite crab apple. You can already see what kind of growth habit it has. It's more of a lollipop form tree. They grow about 12 feet tall, 12 feet wide, and beautiful blooms in the spring. You can see right there on the tag, followed by the beautiful gold orange, half inch persistent fruit. When you see the word persistent on a crab apple tag, that means the tree is going to be less messy because persistent berries hang on to the tree. They don't fall off along with the leaves in fall. Uh, they stay on through the winter months. They provide forage for wildlife. They look gorgeous. And I love the fact that this one has the goldish orange coloring. We have other crab apples that have bright red berries, but it's fun to have some different some different colors out there. This one's also hardy to zone four. So what is that? Negative 30 degrees? 
we should be good. I actually think these would look really pretty in a formal sort of setting, like maybe even behind the Hartley, having one in each one of those square beds. That's what I did in our last garden, in our townhouse. In the backyard, I had a similar layout to what we have behind the Hartley, where there were four beds and there was a center fountain. And I did four lollipop crab apples, which grow very similarly to this one. And eventually they got big and beautiful and uh, Gopher took one of them out. Just, I looked at one day and one of them was completely leaning over. It was so sad. I mean, gophers just come in and they just take out the, the main root right there. And it was just chiseled in like a perfect uh, triangle. I was able just to lift it right out of the ground. So there's no finding a fourth one that was the size of my other three. And then I had the same thing happen to a second one and I decided, to not fight it, but it's something that I could do here for sure. We don't have near the gopher activity in this garden anymore. Right next to it, we have an Indian magic crab apple. And I mentioned this one when I showed it in our last video when I was picking out trees. My in-laws have one. Aaron's parents have one of these right outside their dining room window. And it's one of the most beautiful trees I've about ever seen. They grow, you can see here, 15 by 15. So just kind of a smaller size tree, zone four again. Uh, they have orange red, half inch persistent fruit. So that's really great. But look at the color of the blooms. Oh, they're so pretty. And Paul, my father-in-law, he sends pictures to me throughout the year when the tree is looking exceptional. Uh, the most recent one he sent was the tree was loaded up with snow on all the branches and there was a robin nestled into into the branches. It was just kind of that juxtaposition of winter and spring. It was really pretty. Next to that, we have a flavor top nectarine. This is hands down the favorite fruit tree out in our orchard. Uh, Self-pollinating, uh, ripens about mid-season zone five through nine. And you know how when you read on tags when they say trees are vigorous and extremely productive, sometimes you wonder if they're just trying to sell more trees, if that's actually true. And it is true of this nectarine. I mean, it grows quicker and more full and more productive in terms of fruit than any of our other fruit trees. So we're digging out the red Bartlett pear that's behind our flower shed that's struggling, that has struggled for the past two years, and we're gonna replace it with another nectarine because we just enjoy it so much. They're like a better peach, honestly, because their skin is very soft and tender, but it's not fuzzy, and the um, interior is freestone, so it doesn't stick to the pit. They're just wonderful. Right next to it, we have a miniature nectarine. I was just so excited. I always get excited when I find miniatures of something that's so wonderful, and if it tastes anything near what this one does, then we are in for a treat. Again, this one's self-pollinating. This one uh, blooms a little bit earlier in the season. So we'll see what happens there. I mean, it says pending, the zone is pending. If you live in an area that's prone to uh, frost real late in the season, or if you tend to warm up and then get, you know, freeze again, this, I don't know, this one might be a little bit of a, trial and experiment because if they tend to bloom earlier in the season they're not as good for colder climates ones that stay colder longer uh, so anyway we'll see how that goes the nice thing about it is that if it is in bloom and you are expecting a sudden freeze they're small enough where you can go out and toss some fabric over it they're not hard like a you know and big like a normal fruit tree so four to six feet tall and wide on this one awesome. It's also white fleshed instead of orange fleshed like the flavor top. Okay now we have our evergreen selections from today. I just think this is the cutest thing with the tiny little cones. Just so pretty. So again this is the Push Norway spruce. I have is it Push? I have no idea how to pronounce that word. Uh, but we've got here a zone negative 30 so zone three. Yeah, two feet tall, three feet wide. So it's a fairly slow grower. And when these cones come out in the spring, they are kind of a reddish purple and then they age to this brown, but they stick onto the tree. And you can see the growth. Look at the cone here and then some growth and then another cone right here. Super interesting. Then we've got the Dobbs Frosted Juniper, which some of you guys might think I'm crazy for planting these. They are pretty stickery, and that's kind of why I wanted one that didn't get massive. And this one grows two feet tall is all. So just two feet tall and eight foot spread. Uh, but they've got the most graceful, and maybe I can find a picture of one that's a little bit more mature, but they've got this, just these big, beautiful, arching, kind of graceful looking branches. And I actually cut a few, even though they have that junipery smell, which isn't mo the most pleasant in mass. But if you're using just a few branches in a display or in a arrangement rather, they look so pretty and you can't smell them when there's just a couple uh, worked in and they just provide the most gorgeous texture. And the last one is our Valley Cushion Mugo Pine. 
I just think that this is going to be a really pretty accent. So one foot tall, four foot wide. It's a zone two. Oh my goodness. But I love seeing evergreens like that just tucked into perennial beds because it doesn't get very tall, just one foot. A lot of perennials are gonna be taller than it. So you can actually have some of these things toward the front of beds so that when you start clearing your beds out in late winter, early spring, or in the fall, or whenever you clear out your beds, you still have some structure there. And that's something that we're lacking in the South Gardens because we're just developing it. You know, spaces take a while to evolve, but I could really see when we started to clean things out where I'm lacking some of that bulk, some of that weight in the uh, off season. I wish it was a little less wet. Aaron is brave in planting the arborvitus today. I don't know what he's running into. We'll go check on him. He's been working on that. I am going to hold off planting because I just don't even want to get involved in that mess today. Plus I have a lot of plants to water, things to do. So let's go check on Aaron, see how he's coming along. Goodness, are they even taller than our regular ones? You know, they're just about perfect. Yeah. I mean, that looks... it's like slightly taller. Uh huh. It goes to about my eye, maybe instead of my chin. How was it to plant? Were they were they beastly heavy? You know, the root balls actually weren't all that big, um, but they, they were pretty heavy. Yeah. So I only did two. I didn't. I didn't end up doing all four, because I don't know. I feel like we could just take two back. Yeah. Because it's not that necessary. Sure. I don't know. I don't want to be wasteful. Right. There are these two right here. <laughs> yeah. I just can't decide if it's worth it to pop these out or if I should give these some more time. Like this one looks fine. It's just smaller than the rest. What do you think about popping those out and just planting those elsewhere and putting the two taller ones? So we that could. At least we have kind of a uniformity going on here and we could still use these. Yeah. Because I'm guessing yeah. they're not super rooted based on how they look at right. the moment yeah I, it, we could that looks so good though so much better yeah you can't even hardly tell though no, that they're really. different you can kind of see where the mulch is roughed up in front of the two that went in today and you know i thought the color was going to be more off you know they yeah. looked i thought they were going to be more deep green and they definitely are like maybe a shade deeper but not a tremendous amount no i think they look great yeah awesome what are you gonna do for water because i think that might be the issue here at least in the one that always died i'm not actually going to do anything we've been getting you know our spring moisture so i'm just going to give them the same water as all the rest of them and just hope for the best okay well project finished so this there was no frozen or anything no it uh? wasn't it was still hard was that, it yeah that hole yeah like the sides are really like compacted so I'm hoping that I won't need to turn, I won't need to water them at all really for the next like month, month mm -hmm. and a half, because this is our rainy season. So I'm just hopeful that by the time it comes time to actually water them, if I give them the same water as everything else, that they'll just take this time. And you guys, that is it for today. It's really encouraging to me to know that Aaron, you didn't run into any ice or anything like that. Yeah. That means we can start digging holes and planting things. Uh, we do have, it's supposed to get rainy again this afternoon, later this afternoon, and then uh, tomorrow is like 80% chance of rain, snow mix. Uh, we'll see what happens later this week, but I might just start in and start planting because I feel like if you can get stuff in the ground, um, even like things that don't have leaves on them yet, if they can break dormancy in their holes and just start growing, I think it's really good for the plants. So. Maybe we can get some of that in this spring. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the trip down to the garden center and a little look at what's going on in the garden this time of the year. Now the wind is starting to blow. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye.